Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today I am here to do my May 2024 book of the month prediction video. Now you may be wondering if you are a regular viewer why this video is a little bit late this month and that is because I just got back from a fabulous bookish trip with my mom who you can find at LFL Book Adventures over on Instagram and we went from Las Vegas through Flagstaff, Arizona, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Santa Fe, New Mexico and then we hit Scottsdale in Phoenix, Arizona on the way back and the whole road trip was revolving around books. So we hit up like 10 really cool indie bookstores. We gave away about 120 books to little free libraries. We met some really cool little free library builders in the Albuquerque area. Just did everything bookish and there was some really good food involved too. Um, but I decided that I just wanted to unplug and enjoy that trip and unfortunately I wasn't able to get this video done prior to that trip so I'm a little bit delayed but hopefully you'll still really enjoy this video. I have a lot of books to talk about so let's jump into it and get started. First up we're talking historical fiction. I have three selections for this genre. My first pick is Their Divine Fires by Wendy Chen. This currently has a 4.20 and 25 ratings on Goodreads so far. In 1917 at the dawn of the Chinese Revolution Yun Hong grows up in the Chinese countryside and falls in love with the son of a wealthy landlord. But on the night of her wedding, her brother destroys the marriage before it's even lasted a day. Yun Hong's daughter, Yu Jin, will never know her father. She passes that sorrow on to her own daughters, Hong Jing and Yang Hong, who come of age in the years following Mao's death, battling the push and pull of political forces as they forge their own paths. I've selected this book for Book of the Month because I've noticed that Book of the Month likes to really feature these multi-generational family sagas and this has that element. We see three generations of this family dealing with this one event that kind of trickles down through the branches and I really love that this is set in China during the Cultural Revolution and then it goes all the way till after Mao's death. I think this is a really interesting time period and I'm really interested to see what this book has to say about it. I think this could be a very emotional and impactful read and on top of it the cover of this book is stunning so I think it would make a beautiful book of the month edition. Then we have Last House by Jessica Shattuck. This currently has a 3.88 and a 129 ratings on Goodreads so far. 1953, Nick Taylor, a World War II veteran turned company lawyer and Bet, former codebreaker turned housewife, live in the Vermont mountains with their two children, Catherine and Harry, in a house that could withstand the end of the world. 1968, America is on the brink of change. Protesters fill the streets and Catherine makes her first forays into adult life. She's caught up in the times and struggling to reconcile her privileged childhood with her current ideals. But when the movement shifts, each member of the Taylor family will be forced to reckon with the consequences of the choices that they've each made. I've selected this book for book of the month because this also deals with some really interesting time periods we have post-World War II and we have two people who are very much involved in the war effort. They're living deep in the mountains, kind of away from society, which is something that is common in war veterans. And then we have the late 1960s where there is just so much going on. People are so politically active. There's protests for racial equality, for gender equality. There's protests against the Vietnam War. There are sit-ins. Students across the country are mobilizing and putting societal pressure for change. It's just a really fascinating time period. And I like the idea of our main character recognizing that she had this privileged upbringing and trying to reconcile it with her ideals in that current point in time. I feel like this could be a good pick for book of the month. Then I have The Incorrigibles by Meredith Yeager. This currently has a 4.36 and 14 ratings on Goodreads so far. 1890 San Francisco. Annie Gilmurray, an Irish maid who is seduced by her employer's nephew, is accused of stealing the ring that he promised to her. Sentenced to one year in San Quentin, she is both heartbroken and frightened by the inmates that surround her. She ends up finding friendship among them, but when the unthinkable happens, Annie makes a choice that will alter the course of her life forever. 1972 San Francisco. Aspiring photographer Judy Morelli is grappling with her husband's infidelity. When she finds Annie's mugshot, she becomes interested in her rapidly gentrifying neighborhood and Annie's history. I selected this book for book of the month because this is again a super interesting piece of history. We have Irish immigrants to the States. We have this young woman who is falsely accused of a crime. And I think it's really interesting that we're going to have this look at San Quentin prison from the inside and how she kind of deals with this wrongful incarceration. And I'm a little nervous about the dual timeline aspect of this. Sometimes I can find the, um, 
present timeline to be like a little bit cheesy, but this one sounds like it could potentially be a really good read. I am looking forward to checking this out. Next up, we're talking thrillers, mystery, and horror, and I have three selections for these genres this month. First up is The Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. This currently has a 4.03 and about 1,300 ratings on Goodreads so far. Outside the island, there is nothing. The world was destroyed by the fog that swept the planet, killing anyone it touched. On the island, it is idyllic. 122 villagers and three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast, to obey their nightly curfew, to do what they're told by the scientists. Until, to the horror of the islanders, one of their beloved scientists is found brutally stabbed to death. And then they learn that the murder has triggered a lowering of the security system that protects the island. It's the only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. If the murder isn't solved within 107 hours, the fog will hit the island, smothering everyone on it. But the security system has also wiped everyone's memories of exactly what happened the night before, which means that someone on the island is a murderer and they don't even know it. So I've selected this book for book of the month because Stuart Turton is a pretty well-known author. He wrote The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, and that was pretty well liked and well received. He has not previously been featured by Book of the Month, but I feel like this is an author that gets a pretty decent amount of hype when he's releasing a new book. This one sounds really interesting. It's a little bit different than some of the thrillers that they typically feature, but I could see this being a very smart pick. Then we have The Return of Ellie Black by Emiko Jean. This currently has a 4.20 and 394 ratings on Goodreads so far. It's been 22 years since Detective Chelsea Calhoun Hoon's sister disappeared when they were teenagers. And ever since she's been searching, but happy endings are rare in Chelsea's line of work. Then local teenager Ellie Black, who disappeared two years previous, is found. She's alive in the Washington woods, but something isn't right and Ellie refuses to speak. I picked out this book for book of the month because it's a debut novel. And I feel like this is getting really good hype so far. If you go check it out on Goodreads and look at the reviews of it, everybody has really positive things to say about it. It sounds like it's a really engaging, interesting thriller. And it's interesting because initially when I read the summary, I wasn't all that excited about it. I was like, oh, this is kind of the standard, you know, story where the detective is out trying to find their lost family member. In some ways, it reminds me of Two Bright Rivers, but it sounds like this might go in a different direction and be a little bit more surprising. And uh, I'm really excited about it. Then we have When We Were Silent by Fiona McPhillips. This currently has a 4.29 and 259 ratings on Goodreads so far. Louise Manson is the newest student at Highfield Manor, Dublin's most exclusive private school. Behind its granite walls is a dark secret that Lou has come to expose. But after Lou attempts to bring that secret to life, her time at Highfield ends with a body sprawled at her feet. 30 years later, Lou gets a shocking phone call. A high profile lawyer is bringing a suit against the school and he needs Lou to testify. Lou will have to confront her past for once and for all and discover what really happened at Highfield. So I picked this one for book of the month because this is also a debut novel and this also sounds really interesting. Kind of has that mix of thriller with some dark academia elements. I like that we have the school, there's some dark secrets, murder happens, and that Lou gets brought back to this all 30 years later when she thinks it's all dead and gone. Um, I'm a sucker for a good like reflection on a past crime and so I think that this could be a really interesting read. Next up is the romance genre and I have four selections this month. First up I have Lies and Weddings by Kevin Kwan. This currently has a 4.02 and 294 ratings on Goodreads so far. Rufus Lung Gresham is the future Duke of Greshambury, son of a former Hong Kong supermodel and heir to the legendary Gresham Trust. Unfortunately the trust has been depleted by years of unchecked spending and all that's left is a mountain of debt. The solution put forth by Rufus his mother is for Rufus to attend his sister's luxury wedding at an eco resort, a veritable who's who's of barons, oligarchs, and heiresses, and seduce a woman with money. He has a variety of potential options, but he's still in love with the girl next door, the humble daughter of a doctor, Eden Tong. When a hot mic exposes a secret tryst, the Gresham family plans and reputation go up in flames. I've selected this book for book of the month because Kevin Kwan is the author of Crazy Rich Asians, which was a smash hit turned into a movie that was really popular. And in general, I feel like he gets a pretty decent amount of hype. This book sounds really quirky and interesting. And honestly, the cover of this book is gorgeous. I think it really fits the book of the month aesthetic. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this one show up. Then we have The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. This currently has 
has a 4.30 and 1,300 reviews on Goodreads so far. Anna Green and Liam West Weston had a marriage of convenience while they were at UCLA so that they could take advantage of subsidized couples housing. When the graduation caps were tossed, they both went their separate ways. But three years later, West is being prevented from inheriting his inheritance of $100 million by an outdated clause, stating that Liam has to have been married for five years for him to inherit the money. He decides that it's time to introduce his family to his mysterious not so ex-wife. I've selected this book for book of the month because Christina Lauren is a wildly popular romance author. Their books are always featured by book of the month. They always do really well. I won't be surprised if this one pops up at all. I would be really surprised if it isn't at least an add-on. Then we have Summer Fridays by Suzanne Rendell. This currently has a 4.29 and 34 ratings on Goodreads so far. Summer 1999, 20-something Sawyer is striving to make it in New York. Between her assistant job in publishing, her secret dreams of becoming a writer, and her upcoming wedding to her college boyfriend, her plate is full. But she's facing an incredibly lonely summer as her fiance has been spending longer and longer hours at work with an all too close female colleague named Kendra. Kendra's boyfriend, Nick, asks Sawyer to meet up so that they can compare their suspicions, but they both rub each other the wrong way. After Nick apologizes, a friendship begins to develop and the two of them create a ritual of exploring New York City together every summer Friday. I selected this book for book of the month because I think this is a really relatable romance. Which of us has not had our heart broken? And you know, you have that partner that is like kind of one foot out of the door before they've ended the relationship. Um, I think a lot of people will resonate with that type of story, but at the same time, it's not super dark and depressing because there's hope on the other side. We have this guy, Nick, and these wonderful Fridays during the summer where they're exploring New York City. I think that this could be a realistic but cute romance. Then we have Love at First Book by Jen McKinley. This currently has a 4.27 and 222 ratings on Goodreads so far. Emily Allen, a librarian on Martha's Vineyard, has always dreamed of a life of adventure and travel. So when she's offered a job with her favorite author, Siobhan Riordan, in the Emerald Isle, she jumps at the opportunity. Working with the famed author is more than she could have dreamed of. If only she didn't have to deal with Siobhan's grouchy son, Kieran. I chose this book for Book of the Month because I feel like there are a lot of elements that really fit with the types of romance that Book of the Month likes to select. First of all, there's that literary theme. I love that we have a young woman who is like excited about travel and adventure. I love that this is going to be set in Ireland for at least part of the story. We have a possible grumpy sunshine scenario, which is really popular. I think that this could be a really cute pick for Book of the Month. Now we're going to jump into the contemporary and literary fiction genre. I have three selections this month. First up, I have Allow Me to Introduce Myself by Ogni Noabinelli. This currently has a 4.05 and 20 ratings on Goodreads so far. Ever since she was a child, Anuri's life was chronicled and monetized by her influencer stepmother. Now an adult, she's finally broken free. But when her stepmother starts preying on her younger half-sister, Anuri decides that she must stop the cycle of abuse. I selected this book for book of the month because Onye Noabinelli was previously featured for Someday Maybe, which was a gut punch of a book. The writing in that was really lovely and I think that that was a relatively good pick. I'm really curious to see what Noabinelli will do with a different type of emotional complexity and a different subject matter. And I think that this one sounds really interesting. I love that it digs into influencers and things like that. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Then I have I Hope This Finds You Well by Natalie Sue. This currently has a 4.21 and 324 rating on Goodreads so far. As far as Jolene is concerned, her interactions with her coworkers should start and end with her official duties as an admin. Unfortunately, her incompetent coworkers don't seem to understand what boundaries mean. Her secret to survival? She vents her grievances in petty email postscripts. Then she changes the text color to white so that no one can see them. When one of her secret email postscripts is found, she is sent to sensitivity training and given rigorous email restrictions. When an IT mix-up gives her access to her entire department department's private emails and DMs. Jolene knows that she should report it, but the temptation is too great. And when she discovers that layoffs are coming, she realizes that this might be the key to saving her job. I selected this book for book of the month because this is a debut novel and I found this really amusing and relatable at the same time. How many of us have been sitting at our desk at work dealing with like endless emails from coworkers and you just want to write something snarky back? So I feel like this will be a little bit cathartic for a lot of us. And then I think it's extra interesting that she, instead of getting the restrictions that she was supposed to get, she ends up getting access to the entire department's emails. I feel like there's going to be like a lot of juicy stuff in there. This is going to be, I think, a humorous book, but also with some serious messaging at the end. 
I am really looking forward to this one. And my last selection for the contemporary and literary fiction genres is Oye by Melissa Mungoyon. This currently has a 4.00 and 196 ratings on Goodreads so far. Luciana is the baby of her large Colombian American family. And although she's usually relegated to the sidelines, she now finds herself the voice of reason in the middle of a crisis. As a hurricane threatens South Florida, it's up to her to evacuate her eccentric grandma Abue, who is refusing to go. But the hurricane is isn't the only threat. Abwe is dealing with a crushing medical diagnosis that has sent her off on her own journey. Luciana soon finds herself in the roles of caretaker, translator, and the keeper of the devastating secrets that Abwe begins to share. I've selected this book for book of the month because this is a debut novel and I love what this is about. I love that this is featuring a Colombian American family. I love that this is about a relationship between a girl and her grandmother. I love that there's kind of this coming of age scenario going on where Luciana is the baby of the family, but now she's having to be like the caretaker and the support system. Um, there's just a lot of elements that I think are going to be really fantastic. I feel like this could be very emotionally impactful. And I think that this would make an excellent pick. The cover is also really bright and colorful and cool looking. So I think it would be aesthetically a very nice book of the month pick as well. Next up, we are jumping into fantasy and sci-fi. I have two selections this month. First up, we have Goddess of the River by Vaishnavi Patel. This currently has a 4.25 and 155 ratings on good read so far. A mother and a son, a goddess and a prince, a curse and an oath, a river whose course will change the fate of the world. Ganga, joyful goddess of the river, serves as the caretaker to the mischievous godlings who roam her banks. But when their antics incur the wrath of a powerful sage, Ganga is cursed to become mortal, bound to her human form until she fulfills the obligations of the curse. Though she knows nothing of mortal life, Ganga weds King Shantanu and becomes a queen determined to regain her freedom no matter the cost. But just as she is freed of her binding, she is forced to leave her infant son behind. I've selected this book for book of the month because Vaishnavi Patel was previously featured for her book Kaikei, which I think did really well. I actually have that book sitting here on my bookshelves. It was one of my favorite book of the month books in the last couple years, and I am really anticipating this new release. I personally will be so disappointed if book of the month doesn't feature this one. And honestly, the cover of this is a stunner as well. I know I've said that several times throughout this video, but aesthetically, I think this would make a fantastic book of the month book as well. Then we have When Among Crows by Veronica Roth. This currently has a 4.06 and 341 ratings on Goodreads so far. Pain is Demeter's calling. To slay the monsters that he's been raised to kill, he had to split his soul in half and use his own spine to make a sword. Every time he draws it, he gets his own blood on his hands. Pain is Allah's inheritance. When her mother died, a family curse to witness horrors committed by the Holy Order was passed on to her. The curse will claim her life as it did her mother's unless she can find a cure. One fateful night in Chicago, Demeter comes to Allah with a bargain. Her her help in finding the legendary witch Baba Yaga in exchange for an enchanted flower that just might cure her. Desperate and unaware of what Demeter really is, Ala agrees. I've selected this book for book of the month because Veronica Roth is a pretty well-known uh, young adult fantasy dystopian sci-fi kind of a writer. She wrote the Divergent series and she's written a whole bunch of books since. The reason that I selected this particular book is because it sounds like a pretty big departure from some of the previous things that she's written. It sounds like it might be a little bit darker and grittier and um, there's a lot of really interesting elements in this. I like the incorporation of the Baba Yaga legend and while I don't think this is the most likely pick, I do think it could be a really interesting pick. Then we have A House Like an Accordion by Audrey Burgess. This currently has a 4.40 and 10 ratings on Goodreads so far. Between the growing distance between herself and her husband, the demands of two teenage daughters, and an all-encompassing burnout, Kareth Miller sometimes feels herself fading away. Actual translucence though, that's new. When Kareth wakes up one morning with her hand completely gone, she's frantic. But she quickly realizes that if she's disappearing, it's because her father, an otherworldly artist with the literal ability to capture life in his art, is drawing her. And if he's drawing her, that means he's still alive. But where has he been for the past 25 years and why is he doing the thing that he always warned her not to do? I've selected this book for book of the month because this sounds fascinating. I love that we have this mystery element of the missing father who's been gone for 25 years. I like that there's like this magical element that he can literally draw life into his paintings. I love that his daughter is disappearing. There's just so much interesting stuff going on in this book. This is also another book where I feel like I'm going to be a broken record, but aesthetically, I feel like this cover is gorgeous and it would make a fantastic book for book of the month. And our final genre for the month is nonfiction 
fiction slash memoir, and I have one selection this month. That is Love is a Burning Thing by Nina St. Pierre. This currently has a 4.00 and 21 ratings on Goodreads so far. 10 years before Nina was born, her mother attempted suicide by lighting herself on fire. During her mother's recovery in a burn unit, a nurse initiated her into transcendental meditation. From that day on, her mother's pain became intertwined with the pursuit of enlightenment. Growing up, Nina longed for a normal life. Instead, she and her brother were at the whims of her mother, a mother who chased ascension up and down the state of California, swapping out spiritual practices as often as she swapped apartments. When they finally settled at the foot of a mountain, reputed to be cosmic in Northern California, Nina hoped that life would finally stabilize. But after another fire and a tragic call out, she was forced to confront the shadow side of her mother's mystical narrative. With obsessive dedication, Nina eventually discovers the truth that will release her. I've selected this book for book of the month because this is the type of memoir that I feel like book of the month loves to feature. It's something that I think is going to be very emotionally complex. We have a mom that maybe is experiencing a mental health crisis and dealing with it by seeking this spiritual enlightenment. We have a child that is growing up in chaos, being ripped from one place to the next, constantly changing directives and um, the impact on growing up in such a manner. I think that this could be a really, really good memoir. And again, this is another stunner of a cover. I think this could make a beautiful book of the month book. So those are all of my selections for the month of May, 2024. I hope that you found some really interesting books here. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know what you thought of my picks this month. Were there any books that were on your radar? Any of these that you expect to see? Any of these that you're like, Kaylin, why did you even put these on the list? There's no way that book of the month is gonna pick that. Um, any of them that you're gonna add to your TBR regardless, just tell me all the things. I love the comments that I get on these videos and I really enjoy everybody's feedback. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video and that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining. Bye.